number one which of the following particle is a lepton so a lepton is a type of a fundamental particle well there are actually two types of fundamental particles one there is a family of quarks and the other is a family of leptons so the leptons are the electron electron neutrino muon muon neutrino and tau tau neutrino so muon so this is the answer since this is a part of this neutron is not neutron and proton are not leptons since they are not a fundamental particle itself since neutron is made of up down and down quark and a proton is made of half up and down quark you have to memorize this for the exam so this is this is made of a fundamental particle this itself is not a fundamental particle and part c the pion here part c is not the answer since a pion is a type of meson so the answer to this question is a number two a beam of electrons is made to travel in a circular path by applying a magnetic field across the path of the beams. Which of the following is the direction of the magnetic field required to maintain the circular path for the electron beam? So we have to use the Fleming's left hand rule. So here we would have And since at this point, for example, the force being exerted is actually in the leftward side. This is why the path of the beam is getting deflected or attracted towards the left hand side. So the force is actually leftwards and the conventional current is upward. Using the Fleming's left hand rule, if we put our thumb towards the left and if we put our middle finger upwards, then we would see that the magnetic field line is pointing into the page. So the answer is B. Number three, a toy car rolls down a slope, momentum against time is plotted. Which of the following is represented by the gradient of the graph? So momentum against time remains in the Y axis, we would have momentum. And in the X axis, we would have time. So momentum by time, what is momentum by time? We know that force equals to change in momentum by time. So this momentum by time is actually force. So this is the answer, the resultant force. So the answer is C. Number four, a beam of electron is produced to investigate the wave properties of particles. A beam of, the beam is obtained by accelerating electrons across a potential difference. So this is the cathode, this is the anode. Which of the following would decrease the associated with the electrons? So another big brain question here, let's see. Part A, applying a smaller potential difference between the cathode and the anode. So this, so we know that E equals to V by D and F equals to EQ. And F is the force applied on a charged particle, right? So F equals to EQ, we can also write F equals to V by D into Q. So here, applying a smaller potential difference means a smaller potential difference means smaller force exerted on the electrons. So a smaller force means smaller acceleration of the electrons since F equals to ma. Smaller force means smaller acceleration. And the de Broglie wavelength equals to H by T. So when there, there is lower force and lower acceleration, there would be lower speed, hence lower momentum. Since there would be lower momentum, there would be higher wavelength. So this would increase the wavelength. Part B, decreasing the momentum of the electrons. For this same same effect here, decreasing the momentum would increase the wavelength. So B is not also, also not the answer. Part C, increasing the distance between the cathode and the anode. Right. So increasing the distance between the cathode and the anode, if we do that, increasing the distance here will lower the force. Lower force means lower acceleration. Lower acceleration means lower speed. Lower speed means lower momentum as P equals to mv, lower speed means lower momentum, so lower momentum is corresponding to higher wavelength. So C is not also, also not the answer. But D is the answer since increasing the velocity, increasing the velocity means here the velocity is increasing, so momentum is increasing, and here due to an increase in momentum, the wavelength would decrease. So the answer is D. Five. Accelerators are used to collide high energy particles so that interactions can be studied. 
which of the quanti following quantities is not always conserved in an interaction between particles? A charge. Charge is always conserved. Energy is not always conserved since in an inelastic collision. The total kinetic energy is not conserved. So energy, this type of energy is not conserved. Momentum is conserved. Rest mass is also conserved. So the answer is B. Number six, a potential difference of 0 0.2 volts is applied across parallel plates with a separation of four centimeters. So for example, we have parallel plates like this. The separation is four centimeter with potential difference of two. So for example, we have positive here, 0 0.2 volts and zero here or something like this where the potential difference is 0 0.2. So what is the electric field halfway between the plates? So E equals to V by D. V is 0 0.2 as it is given in the question and D is 4 centimeters. So 4 into 10 to the power minus 2. So the answer is 5 volts per meter. So the answer is C. So it states that what is that electric field strength in the halfway between the plates? This does not have any relation with the question since at every point, at every point between the plates, the electric field strength is the same. So the answer is C. Which row of the table show a possible arrangement of quarks in a baryon and a meson? So meson is a particle which has one quark and, a, and an antiquark like this or like this, strange and charm antiquark, so like this. So a baryon, so let's check baryon. This is not the answer since there are two normal particles and one bar here. This may be possible. This may be possible. This is not possible. Since either we have this or we have this, not in between. So B or C. Let's see meson. Meson is not correct since meson is this type of a particle. This is not correct. This might be correct. This might be correct. No, this is not correct since it has the same quark here. So the only answer is C since both the baryons and mesons match with the pairs. Number eight. Which of the following is a vector quantity? So A, kinetic energy, energy is not a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity. Magnetic flux density. So magnetic flux is, we can write F equals to BIL. So B would be equals to F by IL. So we can see that force is a vector quantity, current and length of wire is a scalar quantity. So if force is a vector quantity, the magnetic flux density would also be a vector quantity, B. C is not a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity, it's just a that for unit B work done so this is quite interesting the work done work done is equals to force into distance distance from a point so force is force is a vector quantity and since distance this distance is from a point it is also a vector quantity so if we multiply these two vector quantities we would end up getting a scalar quantity I think this is in C34 or P4 in the new syllabus that if the top product of two vectors is scalar. So work done is a scalar quantity. So the answer is B. Number nine. The diagram shows the path of two charged particles X and Y moving through the same uniform magnetic field. So here B is constant. The magnetic field density is constant. Which row of the table describes the properties of Y compared to those of X? So we have a property here that the radius of the circular motion is higher or longer than the radius of circular motion of y. This means that this particle is being rotated in circular motion by a magnetic field. So we know that the force on a charged particle of a magnetic field is BQV and it is being rotated in a circular motion so the force will be mv squared by r. So if they are equal we can equate these and we have to make r the subject. So now we can see that for a radius to be lower, this radius is lower, right? And we are only comparing the charge, mass and speed of y. We do not have to consider the speed. The charge and mass is more important here. So speed has to be constant and the magnetic flux density is also constant. So we see here that this y, the radius is lower. So for a lower radius, we, we would need a lower mass or a higher charge. So what option has a lower mass? Lower mass is only this and higher charge is this. So the answer is B. Let's check the other options. Charge of Y the same. Okay. The mass of Y is greater. So if 
the mass of y was greater then higher mass would result in a larger radius but it has a smaller radius here so a is not the answer c charge of y is the same so here if the charge was lower the radius would have been higher so this is also not the answer charge of y same mass of y is greater so this is similar to a but it has a greater speed the particles would have the same speed always so the answer is b number 10 a non-relativistic particle of mass m has momentum p and kinetic energy ek. Another non-relativistic particle of mass 2m and momentum p by 2. What is the kinetic energy of the second particle? So we would have to write the kinetic energy of the second particle in terms of the first particle. So let's see here. Let us calculate the kinetic energy of the first particle. So ek equals to p squared by 2m. This is the kinetic energy of first particle. Let's write the kinetic energy of the second particle, ek2 equals to p square. So the momentum p square would be p by 2 square divided by 2m, 2 into 2m, 2m. So this would be p square by 4 divided by 4m. So p square by 16m. We can rewrite this in the form of this. So we would have 1 by 8 p square by 2m if we multiply these we would get 16 so let's just substitute this here so we would get 1 by 8 ek or ek by 8 so the answer is a